How's the volume and stuff now? The volume's good. Cool, here we go. All right, one, two, three, that's hot. This is Paris. Paris Hilton. Paris. This is Paris Hilton. How many voices do I have? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> that was your real voice. This is Paris Hilton. <laughs> This is Paris Hilton. No, this is. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is. This is Paris Hilton. <laughs> Paris f***ing Hilton. <laughs> this is Paris f***ing Hilton! Hilton is a new breed of celebrity, famous for being famous. She is the great-granddaughter of the hotel magnate Conrad Hilton, the model and the gossip column favorite. Hilton Mania climaxed this week. More than 13 million people watched her show, The Simple Life. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. Paris Hilton is everywhere. Washing her Bentley, Whoa. eating a Carl's Jr. burger. America has embraced Paris's brand. All you hear people talking about the Paris Hilton sex video. Paris is an irresistible punchline. Wow, that's really her. Paris, over here. I don't get it. What does she do? She's totally spoiled and snobby. What does she do? ditch the old blonde girl going to parties image, you're now becoming this big businesswoman. 17 product lines, you're gonna start a hotel chain, not a Hilton chain, your one. Yes. This is big business. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. Loves it. <laughs> Loves it. <laughs> you're the number one female DJ in the world, and you get paid $1 million per DJ gig. The life you have now, I mean, is it everything you want it to be? Is there a next level? Shoes. Diamond, come here, honey. I love you. When I first started this film, I honestly don't even recognize that person anymore. Ever since we started shooting this, I've realized a lot more about myself. I'm nervous, I'm shaking. It's hard to even eat because my stomach is just like turning. I don't know, it's something that's very personal and not something I like talking about. I feel like the whole world thinks they know me because I've been playing this character for so long. I've always heard that people hang out at Walmart. Why? <laughs> I don't what know. What is Walmart? It's like they sell wall stuff. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. No one really knows who I am. Something happened in my childhood that I've never talked about with anyone. I still have nightmares about it. I wish I could bring like a camera into my dreams and like show you what it's like. It's, it's terrifying. And I relive that every night. I experienced it and to this day, I'm still traumatized and 
I think the only way to have these nightmares stop is to do something about it. All right, here we go. I'll just be normal. Sorry, I'm so used to like playing a character that it's like hard for me to like be normal. I always like when a camera's around, like turn into someone else. We're driving to my grandfather's house. My grandfather doesn't know we're shooting there. Like he has no idea. Like he's hates cameras. I, I I did not inherit that part from him. When I talk, do you want me looking in the camera or just looking off camera? Right past it. I'm going to be next to it. It's up to me. OK. All right, can we go back to it again? Real walk. Right. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not on a runway? It's so cute that he put this up. These pictures are so classic. This is my grandfather, Baron, and his brother, Nikki Hilton and my grandmother, Marilyn. Did you make all these? Yeah. Oh my God. Glued all the crystals on myself. There's me, Nancy Reagan, and my parents. My family has always been very conservative. Being part of this family, it's a lot of pressure, it's a lot of weight, because I feel like I'm carrying on a legacy. Look at Ferris. Well, my great grandfather and my grandfather created an insane empire of hotels. And growing up, that was a lot to live up to. It was hard to just like totally be myself. <laughs> Hi, Stars. I have his nickname, Star. What are you excited about, Star? because I was his first baby. My dad always was filming everything. So I just remember always having a camera around. This little girl. Kiss the bunny. It was just this free spirit. <laughs> I'd not been through any trauma yet. <laughs> Give me a pretty face. Give me a nice face. Paris came over and I always would do her makeup. I think there was probably too much focus when she was little on how beautiful she was, honestly. You wanna see a pretty face? Yeah. Pretty one. Uh, and what's your face then? A little poopy face. <laughs> do you think you're gorgeous? No, I think he is. You look a little bit like uh, your mom. <laughs> Growing up, my mom and her sisters were child actresses and models. Goodbye, Tommy. My grandmother was a single mom, and my mom was a model ever since she was a baby. There's just so many beautiful photos of her when she's a little girl. Okay, <laughs> grandmother. My grandmother saw something in me. Action! Oh, my God. Grace Kelly. <laughs> Lantern. Always making me feel that I can be whoever I wanted to be. Excuse me, are you that famous actress? Mm -hmm. What's your name again? Paul Abdul. Bo Derek. Or is that Paris Hilton? Could be better than any of them. Oh, here's a short one. Star, I want to put these on first. I don't want these on now. But my mom didn't want me in the modeling and acting worlds. And I think she just wanted something different for me. You cannot take these things because these are mine. Well, I'm going to get them scanned. No, I'm saying these things are mine. Look, that's so cute. Am I like 11 here? Like nine. Now, here's you starting to walk. Now, when you were, this was your first birthday. And you know how I know that you talked? 
We would say, Paris, who's the president of the United States? Do you remember what you'd say? I was one, I don't even remember. But you'd say Bushy George. <laughs> I look at my mom and dad, they've been together since my mom was 15. My mom was 19 when she had me. We always loved the city Paris and we wanted a beautiful, unique name. And we looked at her and we said, this is Paris. Rick is very private. And I don't think he was really comfortable doing an interview and explaining his life story or his family's. The Hilton family, there are eight children. The first five, they got millions and millions of dollars. And then the three younger ones, they did not. Here we are at the new staircase location. So my husband and I, you know, we worked. Hello, honey. My mom just wanted my sister and I to be like these little princesses. I went to Catholic school for most of my childhood. My mom always taught me to be very proper, private, and to always portray that everything's perfect. My mom just wanted me to be a Hilton. And I just wanted to be Paris. Alpha, Beta, Charlie, take one. Can I just preface this by saying I don't do these types of interviews? I've, in the past 20 years, I've chosen to not really partake in them. But in order for this to be genuine and authentic, there's no one in the world that knows her better than me. So funny. Because her brand is a lot more glamorous than she is. <gasps> She's a chick who likes to scrapbook at home with her dogs, eat leftovers. Yas. She sounds like Homer Simpson. No, but she's very normal. <laughs> Paris, let's f***ing go. I know. <laughs> Move it for the animals. <laughs> ah! Brush my fangs. I don't want to be late. It's my most normal thing in the world to be late. I don't even know how we're related. <laughs> Bye, guys. Love you. Dude, I don't have a little Bye, square. Guys. I have no square, so I'm bringing all these wires. Paris is addicted to drama. Oh, no, 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 no. Go. I, I'm not leaving my sunglasses. I can't. You were going to a f***ing animal bag. I know, Paris. but I need them. No, you do not need yes, them. Yes, I do. We'll take one If they're on the table, please. Always has to be fast-paced and going and even leaving the house and losing the phone and running back to get the laptop. There's always some form of dramedy. I'm going in the car. I, I swear to God, they're right on the counter. God damn it, this is f***ing purse. My gorgeous sisters on our way to the Animal Haven charity. I can't even fake a smile right now because so annoying. Go! Oh, you just ruined the whole snap. Sorry, I'm a little late. But are you mad at me? Yes. Sorry. It's rude. Apologize. Nick, okay, no fighting, you guys. We're, we're not, not going to talk if we fight. Growing up, we were different. Let's go. I was definitely more girly. Well, I was more into sneaking into my mom's closet and playing with her clothes and her shoes. Paris was more a tomboy. Are you going on the golf course, Paris? <laughs> <laughs> she has this persona that she's this sexy, you know, bombshell, but she really is like a boy at heart. 
Oh, is that how you dress tonight? That looks good. Mind your shorts, Dad. Ah! Her and my dad were always doing just fun, weird, animal-related things. I knew they'd be over here with the penguins. I catch one. He likes it. Look at the other ones wondering what that is. She would save up her money to buy monkeys, snakes, ferrets, everything. And once she let the snake out of the cage at the Waldorf. Did she ever tell you about how she had a goat, a pet goat, hidden in my grandfather's tennis court? Or the little monkey that got out hanging up on the chandelier. This cat does not like dogs. She's so sweet, she's so fun, but she's been through a lot. They say trauma. The mind may forget, but the body never forgets. And it's trapped in you. And it can come out whenever. I don't want to bring 30 bags. That's insane. You've been saying this for as long as I've known I you. Know. And you keep doing that. You're gonna change. Sure. No. Um, no. No. I can just put like a little thing here. When do you leave? Tonight. In my life, I've never really looked back at the past. I've always looked toward the future, building my business and creating my own brand. I have 19 product lines, skincare, makeup, every type of product you can imagine. My fragrances have done almost $3 billion in sales. I travel over 250 days a year all around the world. We have like 30 minute hard out. All right. I don't need to bring every single one of these. What country am I going to that I should find out? Bria, London, Paris, Monaco, Geneva, Switzerland. Copenhagen. What? All of these brands are always sending me clothes because they want me to post about them. A different outfit every couple hours of the day. That's a part of being an influencer. I've never been photographed in the same thing twice. Half an hour to pack all of this. No. No. And I need sunglasses with every outfit and purses. Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. I need to ride in a car every day and all I have is gowns. Is that like the biggest brat? <laughs> no, I literally, <laughs> all I have is gowns. Okay. I have five more minutes. You're gonna miss your flight, seriously. Claire, you're really seriously gonna miss the flight. What time is the flight for real? 11. Yeah, right. Yeah. Are you with me? No, I'm gonna be I thought it was 11.45. You guys are lying. Swear. Swear? I can tell when you're lying. <laughs> you guys always do this three hours early. Please say it's 11.45 and I'll leave. This is another bag? <laughs> oh my god. No, parents, do not let go of this bag. Oh, all my money. Yeah, cannot let go of that bag. Okay. Please, I mean, I... that. Do not let go of that bag. I love you guys. Love you. Wish love me you. luck. Good luck.
friends here. Like Lily and Sonia. The blonde girl and the See you guys tomorrow. I love you. <laughs> yes. My two bands are so cute. They flew 30 hours oh to get God. here. So sweet. My fans all around the world name themselves the Little Hiltons. I love my girls. I love you so much. I feel less alone when my little Hiltons are there. But look who we have here. The billion dollar badass boss bitch is landed in Korea. So what's your message to your fans? What's up, Shiraz? And what's up, everyone? I am so excited to be in Korea. We're gonna have the best time at Paris Hilton Skincare Launch. Yes. <laughs> so. Oh, oh my god. Cash. <sighs> no cash. basically, but I also do get nervous, especially when it's big crowds of people. Hello, Paris. How are you? Oh, Paris. You should be in the roller derby. Let's see you skate. It's so fun. When I was a teenager, that was probably my dream to be chased by paparazzi. Thank you, Paris. Uh -huh. I finished my role in A Beautiful Lady. Aww. Thank you. Bye, boys. When I was 18, I was going to clubs and parties and being photographed. In the gossip papers in Los Angeles, you and your sister have been a staple. Why are people so fascinated with you? People always ask me that, and I don't know. I'm just living my life. But after the simple life, the paparazzi were insane. Hey, Bear. Hollywood TV says hello. How's lunch, Bear? I built the foundation of one of the biggest paparazzi companies in the world on the back of Paris Hilton. I had over 100 guys in Los Angeles, all of them making a living of Paris Hilton. For a photograph at that time, it could range between 50,000 up to a million dollars. Paris, you're looking beautiful. If you know that you can make a million dollars in one day, what does it look like? It's war. Photographers at war at the Istanbul airport. Paris caught in the middle. Sometimes I would just get in the car and be alone and just like breathe and just be like, okay, made it. And sometimes I would pull out my camcorder and I'm like filming them. I'm like, do you like this? Do you like how this feels? Look at the paparazzi next in to the us. Car? In the car. Ah. Oh, insane. I feel like that was the height of everything. Can I get a picture with you? Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Paris really started that movement of having paparazzi follow your every move. I wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for, number one, her starting off in the reality world and her introducing me to the world. Paris, how are you today? Good, you look great. Kim, you look awesome. I think the best advice that she ever could have given me was just watching her. 
even though it was so hectic and insane and just nonstop. Hi. Hi. I also loved the attention and the love because I felt like that was love. Eventually, I decided that I didn't want to be a reality star. Like, I wanted to focus more on my business. And I decided that I wanted to control my whole image. I remember 2004, around that time, she was like grabbing her camera, taking a picture of herself. I didn't even know what a selfie was. All the things that people are doing today with social media, the first person was Paris Hilton. Everyone says I'm the original influencer, but sometimes I feel like I help create a monster. Now you sleep. Karen Glam, ready, 8 a.m. Wake refreshed, yeah. In my dreams. <laughs> Never wake refreshed. Literally, my, my mind is going through what the upcoming months are, and it's non stop. Travel all around the world, and I've seen nothing except hotel room, club, stores. I don't even know who I am sometimes. I'm always kind of putting on this, you know, facade or just like happy, perfect life. Just had this plan and then created this brand and this persona and this character and I've been stuck with her ever since. And like, I didn't used to be that way. Oh, I'm so full. Where 
where's my blanket? Oh. I have horrible insomnia. I'm scared to go to bed at night. I always have this recurring nightmare. No matter what I do. I'm in bed and these two people come into my room. Do you want this to happen the easy way or the hard way? I'm trying to just run. I think I slept like three hours. A nightmare, I was like, felt so real. I was just screaming and crying and like telling people someone to help me and then it just ran. Just thinking about it today, I don't really know many genuine people besides like my fans, like Polina and Alex, like when they talk to me, it's like not even like my real friends would say that. But can they care for you? Can they care for me? What do you mean? Is that enough? No. When do you bounce? Tonight. What were you here? 72 hours? What is that? Thursday? Yeah. I speak to you, you say you're going to bed, then I'll wake up and I'll see you posting an Instagram at like 6 a.m. And I know you haven't slept. I can't sleep. Why? My mind won't stop moving. You need to go on a vacation. I've told you this for 15 years. You've never listened in the 15 years. I haven't wanted to Go to Hawaii with no phone. Yeah, right. And just chill. I can't. Why? Because the schedule is too busy. I haven't been on a vacation and. Because you're greedy and you won't turn greedy. down a check. I just, I love making money. I think I come off tough sometimes with her. But I feel I have to, because she has so many yes people and kiss asses around her that I'm going to tell her the truth. You want to show her your room? Yeah, I want to see her room. Do you think you'll ever have kids? Um, I thought I was going to have one. <laughs> But every time I'm with you and I'm with them, I'm like, it makes me so depressed. I know. It's not for everybody. I've never been the most conventional gal. No. But I still, I don't want to be, like, Hi. bye. Can I have a hug? Oh, give one big hug. I love you. I love you. Love you, Lily Grace. Bye, honey. Have fun. <laughs> They're so sweet. And it's so fun. You just get to relive everything that you did. Like watching cartoons in the morning. I still do that. Having Lucky Charms and Captain Crunch. I still do that. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I don't feel that bad for you because I feel like if you wanted kids, and you wanted a husband. 
he would find a way to make it happen. Maybe you don't want it. You think society expects that of you. But if you don't genuinely want it, it's a lot of responsibility. I just don't want to miss that opportunity. I know. To never do it. I know. Yeah. At least I have my eggs frozen. Yeah, thank God. I definitely want to have a girl first, name her London. But I just don't know when I'm going to have time. Like, I will not stop until I make a billion dollars. And then I think I can relax. I know that sounds crazy. I don't know, I just don't want to have to worry. I don't want to ever have to worry about anything. And you're happy? Sometimes. You don't seem that happy lately. Really? I don't know what to do. You have to travel every day, basically, to maintain a relationship, unless you're going to have some bitch boy following me around like they always do and mm -hmm. I lose all respect for them immediately they become emasculated I'm like you need to date an equal if I feel like anyone you can't control an equal I don't like, like that in Paris but because I'm scared the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results okay well I haven't been the same thing <laughs> and you're insane I'm not insane but I'm freaked out by people, especially men. Sex video showing Paris and her ex was released to media outlets and is circulating on the internet. All of this without her consent. These uh, sex videotapes are all over the internet. How many of you have seen them? I've seen them. Uh, she, I, I don't know, she seems like a very personable young woman. That was a private moment with a teenage girl not in her right headspace, but everyone was watching it and laughing like it's something funny. That poor family, to have your daughter do a porno film in a Marriott hotel, I mean, it's... We lived in a hotel where the New York Daily News, the New York Post was on everyone's front door, down the whole hall. So on days where it was a cover story, I would run down the hall first and flip every newspaper over so they didn't have to see it. I was in bed a lot. I didn't want to, like, get up and take the kids to school, you know, face other people. If that happened today, it would not be the same story at all. But they made me the bad person. Like, I did something bad. It was my first real relationship, 18. I was just so, like, in love with him and I wanted to make him happy. And I just remember him just pulling out the camera and he was kind of pressuring me into it. Like, oh, you're so boring. I, do you want me to just call someone else? No one will ever see it. You know, in the beginning they said that I raped her and she was incapacitated and you couldn't see the whites of her eyes. And, you know, I have a full color version on TrustFunGirls.com. TrustFunGirls.com. You can see it was two people in love, enjoying sex. Everybody has sex. And, it's, you know, two people very much in love and having a good time. It was like being electronically raped. <laughs> and for people to think that I did it on purpose. Because after that, all of these leaked tapes were coming out and it almost became like a blueprint to become famous. I don't know. Like I didn't need to do that. Like I always had a plan. My grandmother always called me Grace Kelly, Marilyn Monroe, and I always wanted to live up to that for her. That was my dream. It was going to come true. 
I just felt when that happened, that took it all away from me. I think one of her biggest struggles is trust. She's been betrayed so many times. So she has a real tough time trusting people and letting people in. Spy cams. Why are you doing this? I'm doing this because I have a new boyfriend who's going to be here. Hong oh, Kong. I do want to know what's happening when I'm not here. Put this on the phone so it's live. Hi, babe. Yes. Thank Welcome you. back. Hello. Thank you. Huh? Does not stop. You just live for hours, that's why. I know, but I'm happy you're here. Did you get rest on the plane, at least? No. Why? You're too excited? Of course. Okay. I'll talk to you when I get there. Okay. Wish me luck. I met Alex in Miami, and we were at Ultra Music Festival. And I just saw him, and I just thought he was handsome. He's visited me in L.A. twice, which was a big deal to me, because after my last relationship, I was basically planning on being single the rest of my life. But I don't want to be seen in public together yet. I'm not ready for that. My, my mom. Hello? You're two blocks away? Oh, yeah, what time is Chris coming? Shit. Well, it's 7.30 now. Text her to say, I'm running a few minutes behind, and I, I would like to see you. OK. Love you, Mom. Love you, bye. My mom treats me like I'm 12, so I literally am, like, forever a teenager in my mind. She just wrote me, get down here, young lady. Because it's my event. I have people already been waiting for like an hour and a half, okay. so I don't want to piss them off. Thank you, sweetheart. What's your name? Alexis. Hi, Alexis. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Paris, a little stressed? <laughs> my mom. Hi, honey. Beautiful. Oh, oh, my god, you smell so good. Just watching and seeing her today. All the rhinestones, all the costumes she's attracted to. It's like a little Disney child, yet, I don't know, it's like a shield or a cover. She's probably one of the most intelligent people you'll ever meet. She's extremely brilliant. And the mask is sometimes putting up the stupid persona or the voice. I, I, I just want to know where it stems from. Looking back, I always thought that she was going to be a veterinarian. Want to be a dog doctor, a cat doctor, a bird doctor. It was just such a change from, like, 13 to 15. Good morning, guys. Merry Christmas Eve. Good morning, Mom. Stars, turn around. Show me what you got. Look at Dad. That's pretty, Paris. My sister and I were teenagers. 
We moved to New York. I was the new girl at school. I dealt with a lot of bullying and the girls kind of ganging up on me and being mean to me. In New York, there's the socialite scene. Everyone knew who I was. My mom had us go to etiquette classes. So we basically were taught how to be debutantes. That's very proper, very prim. Almost like a Stepford wife. It just didn't seem real or natural to me. I wasn't allowed to go out or go on dates or school dances. My parents were so strict. No dating, no makeup, no this, no that. Everyone had late curfews. No, you had to be home early. No, 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 no. And then finally, she was just like, doing what I want. In New York, 14, 15, 16, everything that I didn't want her to do, she wanted to do. Getting into modeling, and I was just like, no, 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 no. Not, no, no, not a good scene. I always loved Patricia Field and Betsy Johnson. It was kind of like this whole fashion dream world for me. The pink hair and glitter and the shortest little skirts. That's how I was dressing. She'd buy wigs, necklaces that said sexy, hot bitch. What? I'm thinking, no, no, this is, this is too much for me. This is crazy. And then I got a really good fake ID. She was just gone in the night. And my mother would be up all night calling every nightclub, threatening them. I think I just got addicted to the nightlife. I felt accepted. I just felt like, like the queen of the night. And that's where I really became Paris. Finally. I locked her in the room. I was afraid she could run into a predator, get kidnapped. Fear, to me, is the most powerful feeling there is, fear. More than pain, more than love, more than hate, more than like, more than fear. And I thought this was the worst mistake ever moving here. I gotta get her out of here. I was just a kid living in New York, going to high school. Obviously ditching a lot of class, whatever, but I feel like my parents were scared and they didn't want their reputations to be ruined because page six was writing all these stories so I felt like I was just kind of just sent away to be hidden. All you ever wanted was the best for your child. I first sent her to an outdoor wilderness program. It's for teenage boys and girls needing a change of attitude and direction. There's all these places called emotional growth schools. The first place was in the middle of nowhere. We were building other camps, basically doing manual labor all day long. It was just constant yelling at, like, boot camp style. So I whispered to one of the girls, like, let's get out of here tonight. <sighs> she got away. We ran through cornfields, through mountains. The guys that worked at the camp grabbed us, and then we got back, and they literally just beat the hell out of us in front of everyone, just to let everyone know, if you run away, this is what happens. And then they sent me to this other place, which was hell, too, and I ran away from there. She jumped down an entire flight of stairs. 
They shut down highways, they shut down the airport. I escaped from Ascent, Cascade, Sea All of these emotional growth schools. We're just spending all our time trying to figure out where do we, should we move to the moon? What do we do? I'm like, please, can I just go home? I've already been through so much. I promise I'll never go to a club again. Please, like, I, I can't go back to these places. Like, you have no idea. There was no convincing them, no matter what I said. So I just didn't trust them. It made me not trust anyone, not even my own family. Even to this day, it's really hard for me to let anyone in. I'm like scared, like I haven't got to experience like real life, like having a family and being like in love. <laughs> I want to change. Last vacation was probably when I was 15 <laughs> with my family. It's just been nonstop work and I felt like I needed to do this for myself or I'm going to lose it. It's so beautiful, it's Mykonos, I love it here. But for some reason, it's hard for me to relax. I put this new app on my phone, which tells you like the amount of time you spend on social media. Usually, I'm like up to here. 16 hours and 19 minutes. When you add up all those hours in your life, it's literally like years of your life spent just like looking at a phone. It's just beyond. It's nice. It's so romantic. I 
I think that's the best part of life is falling in love and being in love. It's the most incredible feeling in the world and I haven't felt it in so long. Sometimes I feel like I've almost become numb to it. I don't know. With my last engagement, I was really happy in the beginning. Paris Hilton's boyfriend of two years proposed with a $2 million, 20-carat diamond ring. Wow. Tell us about him. Why is he the one? Because you've, you've tried a few. <laughs> <laughs> you've taken a few test runs, haven't we all? Yeah, I found, finally found my perfect other half. From the outside, it would look like just the perfect couple because I'm posting all these really happy photos and amazing quotes. Paris Hilton addressing her split with Chris Zilka ending their engagement. But deep down, I just felt kind of trapped. When you get married, you're forced to grow up. Were you afraid to grow up? I am afraid to grow up. Look, I know I am grown up. I don't know. I think after being at those schools, you, you lose your childhood. come alive. I love music and I love just like dance on the table and just have fun. I just feel like I'm on top of the world. I just feel so free and happy and alive. Like, I'm a conductor with, like, this whole orchestra of people controlling the room and just feeling all the love. playing that's my time like when I have fun there's nothing like it people talk shit and say that I'm not DJing live at my first concert in Brazil for 30,000 people the guy came up for one second just to turn the volume and that picture just went viral it was like Paris wasn't DJing this guy was doing it so I really have to like prove myself, especially being a woman in this industry as well, because it's like a boy's world. So I finally arrived in Belgium, and no, this is not some new filter I haven't seen. It's actually this like sick mask that I got. And um, I'm about to go to Tomorrowland. I'm playing there on Sunday. Ooh. Okay, the pink is the best. Anyway, I am just getting ready for the festival, and I will see you on this set on Sunday at Smash the House stage. I'm scared. 
If this erases, so I've been practicing this set for like two months. I know, but I'm my cute. life. No, I think it's gone. <laughs> it works. Oh my god, okay. We're supposed to leave in 17 minutes and 21 seconds. <sighs> I am nervous as Every summer I've been wanting to come here. Tomorrowland is the most prestigious, like, biggest festival in the world. Like, there's nothing that compares to it. So to be playing at this is like, <laughs> I, I'm like, I can't believe it. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Me? Mm -hmm. Me? Yes, you're For so, what? because you're just very helpful and patient. That's normal. Babe. And I know I'm a <laughs> nightmare to deal with. <laughs> a nightmare. <laughs> Love you, baby. It's all good. Love you too. All right, let's do this. <laughs> I'm hot. Okay. Let's go. I have not done a sound check. I can go and set it up. You don't even know how to do it. <laughs> all right, here I go. <laughs> this shit changes the name to Tomorrow <laughs> Land. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're here. What's happening? Where is everyone? The press? Let's just do the press so we can get this over with and do everything. Okay. But let's make sure the computer doesn't fall off because I will like commit suicide. Where is the press room? We are live at Tomorrowland and in the studio we have Paris Hilton. Woo! This is Tomorrowland One World Radio. And we welcome to the studio Paris Hilton! So as we celebrating 15 years at Tomorrowland, what would 15-year-old Paris Hilton think of Tomorrowland? I've been actually going to raves since I was 15. So the 15-year-old, who I basically still am at heart, would uh -huh. be raging at balls here. Totally <laughs> blown away by it, right? Yes. Thank you. Have fun. Have fun. Going in. Thank you. Okay. Sick nice. math. Drink water, please. Please. Nope. Please don't stress me out. I'm really nervous as it is. No, babe, I wouldn't stress you out, but you left me five times a day. But, baby, I was just doing nine interviews. It's not my fault. Yes, after that, that was like a promotion. No, that was some, poor, I, that was some even, girl. She was a new artist. Yes, she was even nothing. if you're right, if I say no, you don't have to do it. I can't say no to people. Yes, no. that's what you promised Babe, that's me. why I've been in this industry for You're 20 years. You're doing more years. promotion for them, like oh, for me. Oh, honey, don't. I don't care that you do promotion about me, but it's just like you do more for them, like for me. I'm carrying your microphone, OK? Well, I didn't even put my set together because I had no time, because I've been fighting the whole time. Hey, uh, need to go. Stay. Now? Let's go. Sorry. Nothing happened. What do you mean it's nothing? Jesus Christ. You can't just drop a computer before a set. What should happen? We have, what should happen? Uh, the computer could break? Please don't, don't close it. How, how should I keep it open? Oh. Can someone who's not going to drop it take it? Thank you. Please stop. Do not do this before my set. Alex, can you tell him to chill the f out? This is f***ed up. I'm playing Tomorrowland. He needs to chill the f*** out. I'm sick of this shit. I'm playing in six minutes. So insecure. Stop. Are you really doing that before my set? OK, then never speak to me again. Tell him to chill the f*** out. I love you. Please stop. Please stop. Please. No, don't love me. I'm begging you. Stop. I started four minutes. Please. I started four minutes. 
Felicia. Way too many computers. This is not all like different relationships, <laughs> but anytime I do have a new boyfriend, I always get a full new computer because they always break into my computers or they'll scream at me and threaten me. Give me your password now. One night I was with one of my ex-boyfriends and we got in a big fight. I was on my computer ignoring him because I felt really uncomfortable. And he just grabbed it from me and just like slammed it on the floor. I should probably check and see if there's more. <sighs> Great, I just revealed my hiding place. I've never used any of this stuff. I just buy things and then people put them in here and then I can't see anything because no one organizes anything. You've got so much stuff. Yeah. And you're always saying to me, you need to make your billion dollars. Like, that's what you're trying to do. You yeah. Make a billion. <laughs> to spend it. <laughs> that's just my goal in life. Like, when I was a teenager, I always wanted to make 100 million. I was like, when I do that, I'm going to be happy. And I think once you do your goal, you just want to keep going more and more. And then what? And then I'll be happy. <laughs> I'm happy now, sometimes but it is lonely. What about Alex? I told him that I'm just not ready for something right now. Like I've never ripped someone's bracelets off their arms at a music festival. That's like one of the meanest things you could do to someone is taking away their artist band. But I just had had enough at that point. A person can only take so much. Like anything that tries to control me is, it can't have room in my life. You know, she's such a beautiful person and such a good girl, and I believe that all of the things that she's gone through have made her stronger. And then she would say things to me after, like, I still have nightmares. I, I still in the middle of my night, I feel, you know, she would say that. 
and I always take what people say with a grain of salt. Like I think, yeah, it did bother her, but it was it was our way of saving you. Did she tell you she was put into solitary? When you mean solitary, what do you mean? Solitary confinement, treating children like they're in a prison instead of a school. Are you serious? She's never told me that. In Utah? Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh -oh. Popping bottles. Mm. Cheers, bitch. Cheers. <laughs> Again. I look beyond. No, you do not. The woman has been up since 5 in the morning. I went to bed at 1.30. The woman looks amazing. I woke up five times, having nightmares as always. I have, like, dreams of, like, my real life. Like, when I was, like, taken from my house, like, by people and, like, being locked up somewhere. Hi. Look at how gorgeous. Mm -hmm. yep. What have you guys been doing? Chilling, just thinking about life and why I have nightmares. Remember that like random school I went to? Mm -hmm. In Salt Lake City? Yeah. Yeah. Remember like seven years ago, I was in Europe and I met someone who was at one of those places with you and I put you on the phone with them? What did he say? That you guys were at this place and it was just like, Mental, it was like abuse. There's Paris. Here we are at Paris's school. Here's Starry's room. Did you visit me there? I don't remember, but then I saw a video. Wasn't I there? You don't remember it? No. I feel like we both blocked it out. Mom and Dad always loved like hiding things from everything. Our they're the king and queen of sweeping everything under the rug. <laughs> yeah. My parents always hid everything from us. So I would listen on the phone. That's how I got all my intel. And I remember it was a school night. It was the middle of the night. And I just heard screaming, bloody murder. I knew there was a, a takedown in the works. I didn't know it was people coming in and capturing her. I thought I was being kidnapped. I started screaming for my mom and dad, like, help me. And no one came. As they were taking me, I saw my parents standing by their door, crying. And I was like, please help me, what's happening? And no one would tell me what was happening. And then in the morning, it was breakfast, and Paris didn't come to the breakfast table. And then my parents were like smiling, like everything's fine. And we didn't ask any questions. And then I think they said she like went to boarding school. Because they were always trying to protect us and shield us. <laughs> Did you ever get like nervous that that would happen to you? Because if no. they didn't really explain it to you on why she was going away, did you ever feel like? She was very naughty. What? <laughs> she was. Did you talk to her about things? Did you? Like... I told on her with everything. Thanks, I would bitch. listen on the phone. Have you ever said sorry to mom and dad? No. Like, hell. I went through hell too. I know. The last school that I went to was Provo Canyon School. And that was the worst of the worst. There's no getting out of there. 
be sitting on a chair, staring at a wall all day long, getting yelled at or hit. I felt like a lot of the people who work there got off on torturing children and seeing them naked. They would prescribe everyone all these pills. I didn't know what they were giving me. I would just feel so tired and numb. Some people in that place were just gone. Like, the lights are on, no one's home. A lot of people were on suicide watch. And I was so scared that was gonna happen to me. So eventually, I found out a way to not take the pills. But everyone would tell on everyone, and they found a Kleenex with all of the pills in it. And I got in so much trouble for that. Solitary confinement. Like, something out of one flew over the cuckoo's nest. They'd make people take their clothes off and go in there, like, for 20 hours. Felt like I was going crazy. Someone was in the other room that was, like, in a straight jacket, screaming. I was just freezing. I was starving. I was alone. I was scared. My parents were in New York. They didn't know. But I was so angry and so upset that I just... I hated them. I was at Provo for 11 months. And the only thing that saved my sanity was thinking about what I wanted to do and who I wanted to become when I got out of there. I was going to do everything in my power to be so successful that my parents could never control me again. When I turned 18 and got out of Provo, it was one of the happiest moments of my life. I just wanted to be independent, make a name for myself, and build my brand. I knew that would be the ultimate freedom. And that's when I met David LaChapelle. David LaChapelle is one of the most iconic photographers in the world. David said, we need to shoot at your grandparents' house. I was like, totally. Like, we'll climb the gate. I don't care. I'll open it. So basically, we're in this room at around, like, 3 in the morning, and he wanted it to be a strong picture. I'm just, like, posing, like, whatever. And I think he wanted to provoke me. But it was just a moment where he looked at me and just said, like, F you, as a joke. And then me going back, and I was like, And that was the shot he used, just that one instant. Mom's calling him, freaking out. So I was upset and I was scared, but I think deep down I just knew this is iconic. Vanity Fair ended up doing a huge story on it. This was before The Simple Life, so this is basically how the world got to know me. Coming out of Provo, I was also, like, very like, traumatized. I never spoke to my family about it. I think all my anger just went into my drive for success. made me strong, but when I think about it, it gives me anxiety. It's really f hard. I don't know. Maybe inside my mind, I was thinking, like, what I was doing in the picture. It's like a big f you.
I don't know if my nightmares will ever go away, but I do know that there's probably hundreds of thousands of kids who are going through the same thing right now. And maybe if I can help stop their nightmares, it will help me stop mine. seen this person in 20 years in my purse. Part of going to those schools and having nothing and everything taken away. And when I got out of there, I was like, I just want to have everything I want. And like, it's too much. But I don't know, when you get everything taken away, you're just like, you're just, I don't know, I just, I don't really appreciate it everything and I want everything. I've been looking for my old roommates and people I became friends with there. And I'm meeting one of the survivors from the school. I'm so shy. Are you nervous because you're shy or are you nervous because you're nervous to start this? Everything. It's, it's a lot and I don't know what I'm walking into. A couple years ago when I started researching and going into it and Everything was coming back to me. I wanted to do something, but at the same time, I was like, this is gonna hurt my brand. I can't have this as part of my business. And, you know, people won't understand. But if I don't do this, it's gonna continue to happen. And I'm gonna continue to always be traumatized and think about it for the rest of my life. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good. Long time no see. I don't yeah. know if you recognize me. I looked very yes. different back then. Hey, thank you for coming. Yeah, no problem. It's weird that like a lot of survivors, they wake up like after like 15, 20 years and like, wow, like it hits them and they are ready to talk about it. Yeah. So Provo Canyon School, it's been this beast that's been around for 50 years. But every once in a while, some employees would decide that it's gonna be great if they open their own programs. Mm. So PCS not only is responsible for the kids they abuse, but like all these sister programs that branched down and made the troubled teen industry. There are other celebrities that went through PCS, and I won't say their name, especially not on camera, but like you're the first one to bravely speak up. It needs to stop. Like, I literally want to go there and be like, all right, we're going in <laughs> and we're taking all these kids out. Or no, big, trying to talk bus. to them, I don't know, but I, know, I don't know what they, they'd probably call the cops and go crazy. So I was going to show you, like, all the support you have from uh, Raina and uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth actually looks just like she looked at PCS, except just, like, age regression. Yes, I do remember her. I still have nightmares, and it's, it's been 20 years. Do you remember Raina Hager? I, I remember her, too. The staff were abusive. I think one thing I can say is that they tried really hard to break me. And they caused a few cracks. <laughs> I don't think I met your, your best friend there, but we did find her, Jessica. Jessica, she was such a badass. <laughs> I ended up in an abusive relationship after I left Provo. I'm thinking maybe like being in places where they're abusive to you would make you think that that's normal way to be there's a bunch of police reports we were able to gather uh, like from 2011 to 2014 56 calls of assault to Provo Canyon School and 25 calls to the police in regards to sexual offenses I'll also uh, forward to uh, if you want to show this to your parents no, at I all this. no I, I want to I I'm just like <laughs> processing this again um, it's not easy. We all have to get to that point where we're ready to open up about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have nightmares, but I have nightmares almost every night of me being taken. Ever since I got kidnapped at 16, like a pin drops and I wake up. This like 
hyper vigilance of like every situation. And I think like I still take that with me in like work and stuff like that where I'm like scoping out like how do I get out of here? Like what's in the situation? Like I feel the exact same way about <laughs> everything. Like I even with love and relationships I never like fully open because I'm I don't even know how to. You know, one thing I've also seen with other survivors um, is that because the lines of like tough love and abuse are so blurred, that it's really easy easy to not see the signs of abuse ahead of time in a relationship. After being at Provo, you don't even know what love is or how to have a relationship. You look hideous. I've been in a lot of relationships where people, they just get so controlling and get so angry that they become physical. How many? Mm. One, two, like five, five guys. We just got in an argument. I was trying to leave his house and he just got really mad. Just grabbing me and pulling me. I don't really remember most of it, because I've had worse stuff happen. It's been strangled and phones thrown at me, computers. And I accepted it, because I almost thought it was normal. And it's like, oh, he loves me so much that he's going this crazy. And I just wanted love so bad that I was willing to accept being hit or yelled at or screamed or strangled or a lot of things. Even the tape that never would have happened if I hadn't went to Provo. I was just so lost and desperate for love that I found the worst possible person. <laughs> After being at that school, I just didn't want anyone to know and I didn't want to be embarrassed. I was so obsessed with looking perfect on the outside. That's why I always have to project basically what I think the public wants. And now I see even little girls who are 10 years old, nine years old, and they're trying to get the perfect selfie. They're putting the filters on. They can't even look at themselves on the phone without putting a filter. I can't even imagine being like a 13-year-old girl today. Do you feel responsible for it? I mean, many people have said you're the architect of that. I do feel responsible for it. Hello? Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good. Catherine. How are awesome. you? Email. Awesome. Are you ready for tomorrow? Yes. I'm excited. I'm nervous. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're not going to be the only one. Yes. <laughs> The sample photos I, I sent you, those are from other girls that were in other programs, but I cool. think it kind of maximizes your, uh, so those skills you have as far as social media and, and raising awareness that way. Yeah, this is amazing. I love it. The whole campaign about breaking the silence is about coming out and saying, this happened to me, and it kind of empowers others who they were ashamed about talking about before. I've never discussed this publicly with anyone, so... It's, it's going to be, like, like a, a shock to people, I'm sure, because no one knows. Oh, yeah. But, like, it's the right thing to do to help kids. Definitely. I just, I can't even imagine the fact that they have nine-year-olds in there now. Like, what? Eight-year-olds, no less. Eight-year-olds. Eight and these parents have no idea. I don't see them. Oh, they're coming.
So yeah, we are doing this. This is crazy. So bizarre. Crazy. I spent decades trying to find you, and she found you in 10 minutes. Yeah, we well, yeah, actually. We're, like, we're you, the, the two of them, like. So, <laughs> why the heck? <laughs> what? It's only been 20 years. So why in the world would anybody want to reach me? <laughs> Hi, girls. Hey. Hi. Hey. Oh my god, it's been so long. <laughs> Look the same, you two. Hi, hey. sweetheart. How are you? Yeah. Hey, kitty. How's everyone else been? I'm a little shy. So am I. I think that place made me shy. My mind has literally blocked out a huge portion of this. One of the things I remember most, us talking about like our dreams of like what we were gonna do when we were out of there. It's like an escape. So thank you for that. Of course. You were always so cool. You too, Rumi. <laughs> When I saw The Simple Life, I cracked up. I'm like, that's, that's not real. <laughs> that's a, that was some straight up bullshit, especially like when she was like, I don't know how to use a mop. I've that's never that's cleaned thing, in my life. That's the thing too. <laughs> like after all we went through, like how we were like forced to clean, like you know how to use a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to wash a dish. <laughs> But also, I don't think you had like a high-pitched voice that I remember either. Like back then, did I or no? No, I remember you in class. I don't remember. So in Beth's class, we were doing economics. I remember like it was the day that you blew my mind because like you were quiet a lot, and then there was like this bit where you were just like actually, and you like explained this it economic theory, and it, it was, was super clear. clear and super smart, and I was just like, holy crap, this chick is genius. <laughs> 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 So this is like an example of like some other girls that have done this breaking code silence campaign. You know, like, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. And this is, you know, I, I was a survivor of Provo Canyon School. While I was there, I was deprived of my rights. Wow. Provo Canyon School, what are we writing next? Then you can put underneath the... Rough dates? Yeah. Our years and then gave me... Trust issues. Fear of being controlled. With PTSD. There's so many that it will not put on the card. Women. People are to look at me like, whoa, Paris has a lot of issues. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I've got a lot of The thing is, fault. is that like these issues aren't issues that you like decided to create one day and have and walk around in the world with. You know what I mean? This isn't your shame. It's not her shame or hers or mine. It's their fing shame. Yeah. We've just been carrying it. Amen. My name is Catherine McNamara, and I'm a survivor of Provo Canyon School. I was force fed. I was cut off from friends, family. I witnessed girls be physically and emotionally and sexually abused. I was emotionally abused by staff, by other peers. What's up? There's no pressure. Okay. I understand. Thank you. I witnessed and endured physical abuse, restraints, emotional, mental abuse. I was forced onto medications. I was taught that everything that happened to me was all my fault. I'm speaking out because no child deserves to be punished for expressing their feelings. <laughs> Especially when that punishment just equals more torture and more trauma. I've had to be done. That was awesome. I just came up here because it was just so much to take in. I was like, oh my God, like, I'm not alone. It's not me and it's not my fault. And sometimes I feel like so many things, but sometimes like this robot and this character that I did and it, talking with them, like I started remembering who I was before. <laughs> and just, I don't know. It makes me sad they took that away. <laughs> But I don't know, I'm just so confused. <laughs> but like, 
it's refreshing and new. I, I don't really know anyone besides my family members and a very small amount of people that knew me before all of this happened and before I became this, you know, this thing, I don't know. The mask I put on and the way I am and like this extravagance and the photos of me, like all this is stemmed just from this place. When I look around my life, like, it's like a cartoon. I don't know, like I created this fantasy world cartoon. But the thing is, I don't even give a f about any of these things. I've hardly worn any of these shoes. I love just chilling in like my sweatsuit, my socks, being at home, and then all this other stuff is just part of the character. Hey. Hey. Yeah. You look like boss lady right there. I feel like that's like the ultimate like f you Provo picture. That's my yeah. <laughs> You are a f***ing warrior. We all are. We're all survivors, we're all warriors. And I don't want anyone to ever feel the way we do. All this brought up so much, I can't even believe it. It's so crazy, I'm, I'm like so happy that we all connected again. Totally, me too. I think it will probably help you start to want to deal with things that you haven't been dealing with. And I hope that it does. Me too. You should live free. And I'm not talking about, like, free to, like, walk around without people watching you. I'm talking about free in your mind and in your heart. Yeah. From things that have happened in your life. One day. You're gonna have to explain what it is. What are you showing me, guys? You're scaring me. <laughs> no, it's not scary. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I reconnected with some of the girls from Provo. Right. And Katie is one of them. And Katie is doing this entire movement called Break Code Silence, which is survivors from these schools speaking out about this. My old roommates and and everyone made a sign, and it basically says, like, what the school did to them. And now everyone's speaking out about it because they're realizing that a lot of the things that happened in their life is because of the school. Acute panic disorder, nightmares, and insomnia, trust issues. And we're all going to post it and basically raise awareness. Verbally and emotionally, physically abused me. Mm -hmm. Just screaming at me all the time. Right. Strangling, locking me in a room. I know this is something that we've never discussed before. Mm -hmm. They were constantly being abusive in every way. But I couldn't tell you guys because every time I tried, I would get punished by them. Or they would say, we're just gonna tell your parents you're a liar and they're not gonna believe you. And basically, I, they just told me that so many different times that I was afraid to ever even say anything or bring it up. Had I known this, and you know that Dad and I would have been there in one second. Oh, boy. Oh. Love you, Mom. 
so proud of you and you know. Like this is the best point I've ever been in in my life. We were really talking about our lives and things that affected us and making a change and a difference. And I don't, it just made me feel like I wasn't alone anymore. I've worked so hard to build this brand and it's been all about this perfect, happy life. And that story was never a part of this brand. Can you and the brand have a divorce now? No. <laughs> but it'll be an expensive divorce. <laughs> You can't do the brand forever. You can't. You're going to age out of it. No. I'll just be like this forever. <laughs> Come home in the morning light, my mother says, when you're going to live your life right. Oh, mother dear, we're not the fortunate ones and girls. They want to have fun Oh, girls just want to have fun The phone rings in the middle of the night My father yells, what you gonna do with your life? Oh, daddy dear, you know you're still number one But girls they want to have fun Oh, girls just want to have fun That's all they really want Is some fun When the working day is done Oh, girls, they want to have Some boys take a beautiful girl and hide her away from the rest of the world. I want to be the one to walk in the sun and girls, they want to have fun. Oh, girls just want to have fun. So they really were some fun when the working day is done. Oh, girls, they want to have fun. Oh, girls just want to have fun. They just want to, they just want to. Just wanna, they 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 just wanna.